Well, it, it burned in uh, our traditional homeland. You know, it burned, uh, uh, you know, 413,000 acres uh, in uh, land that we've occupied for thousands and thousands of years. that uh, uh, of elders, people I've hunted with that have passed, you know, so it's, it's kind of sad, definitely. And to see so much of that area just blackened and destroyed, it's just, it's uh, heartbreaking. That's Don Gentry, chairman of the Klamath tribes. The tribes lost roughly a quarter of their territory in what was the largest wildfire in the U.S. and the third largest fire in Oregon's history. The bootleg burned more than 413,000 acres over 39 days. The fire was so large, it created its own weather system, producing a lightning cloud and even a fire tornado. Oregon is currently having one of the worst fire years on record, with over a million more acres burned by mid-August compared to that time last year. We drove to Klamath Falls to speak with firefighters at the bootleg fire about what it's like to work on an extreme wildfire during an extreme wildfire season. Sometimes the, you'll, the senses you get of the fire very loud, drowning out the roar of a big helicopter overhead. I've been there and done that. Watching big timber bend from the wind. A fire moving so fast to you, there's no way you could outrun it. A black mass, sometimes everybody thinks they're just gonna, we're gonna run out and we'll see all the flames. Many times it's a black mass that you're looking at. Just, just a black mass moving across the terrain. And it's talking to you at the same time. You can hear it like a freight train sometimes coming down a canyon. It's just really loud. That black mass inside of that black mass, sometimes you'll see it open up and you see all, as we call it sometimes, the red dragon. You see it, you don't want to be too close. Unless you do this, the sense and the feel and the smell and the sound, it's hard to explain to the public. It's a perfect trifecta of, uh, of bad things. You know, you have uh, really bad temperatures, high temperatures, temperatures are rising, uh, humidities are dry here, you know, we're in the high desert. So we're dealing with extreme drought conditions, so everything out there that normally has some amount of moisture in it, it has little to no moisture in it. So that means it's very receptive to fire as, it, as it's exposed to the growing fire. And the sheer size of this makes it very difficult to manage. For wildland firefighters like Jordan Gulley, the bootleg in its extremity is a reflection of future wildfires if no preventative measures are taken. It would be a new normal. You know, a term that we started using uh, in, our in our work is a uh, fire year instead of a fire season. And I would say, you referred back to 2020, I would say uh, since I started fighting fire in 2007, uh, it has slowly ramped up. So 2014 was pretty awful, 2015 was even worse, 2016 was even worse. And so it's been a gradual incline to get to this point. And I would suspect uh, without proper fuels management and uh, you know, embracing the future of what fire and our weather and our conditions on earth here are, uh, we are gonna have worse fire seasons. 2021 has been an intense first experience for wildland firefighters like Nick, just entering the field. And at this point in the season, I already have almost as many days on fire as some people received during the entirety of 2020. And most of those people who received a lot of days last year weren't even getting their first calls until this time of the year. There were a lot of times at the beginning of both of those fires where we were working in extremely high stress situations right next to the flaming fronts. Um, at times we had to give up what we were doing to get away from the fire and then watch all of the work that we'd put in burn up as the fire um, came in behind us. At times that was really disheartening, but even at those times we knew that we were making a difference in slowing down the fire and doing everything that we could to control it. This season is a lot larger and a lot more intense than last season was, and I do think that extreme fire behavior is going to become more of a norm from now on. Frequent large fires have tested the limits of wildland firefighters who must work 14 days on for up to 16 hours a day. We're used to the long days, long hours, but definitely there's the fatigue factor. I think the biggest factor I see is just the lack of resources. There's so many fires at one time that we order a lot of equipment and a lot of crews and a lot of engines and we just can't get it. 
because there are so many fires going. As so why are wildfires becoming more extreme? And why do firefighters see this as a new normal? We spoke to John Bailey, a professor of forestry at Oregon State University, to find out more. The trend that we're on is that, you know, that's being driven by climate change, the, the current pattern we're in, and that's pretty, pretty widely accepted. But certainly the scientific community agrees that, you know, things are going to keep getting warmer and fire seasons will keep getting longer. This year in 2021, uh, a remarkably early start to the fire season uh, when, when we had the bootleg fire uh, kicking up and doing amazing things in June. The fire managers there are talking about August-style fire behavior in June. That's because of those weather conditions, the fuel, the amount of fuel in that landscape uh, being burned. So fire suppression is still a, a major directive. Uh, that leaves the fuel there for tomorrow or next week or next year when the conditions may be even worse. And we were just talking about that. You know, actually, the conditions are going to get worse. So we've got to think very carefully about every time we choose to try to suppress, is that actually going to make it worse? Or would these conditions be more acceptable uh, to go ahead and burn it now and even to maybe put more fire on the ground in order to treat the fuels and create these areas? Uh, that, that would be better prepared for future wildfires. That's exactly what Steve Rondeau of the Kalamath Tribes is trying to accomplish. The tribes are working with the U.S. Forest Service and the nonprofit Nature Conservancy to treat the landscape and return it to a historical condition, which includes prescribed burns and forest thinning to slow wildfires. Areas treated by the tribes retained more vegetation and even helped to slow the fast-moving bootleg fire. You know, the treatments are specifically designed to work effectively with fire because the way the forest was historically naturally worked well with fire. So we wanted to take those lessons and apply those to the future. So we did a number of different kind of research projects and information collecting in the field um, to understand what those forests look like historically and then apply that. What we learned over time is that the natural structure of the forest uh, would naturally um, be resilient to wildfire. And the only way you get to a condition like that is if you do actively manage it. And I think that that kind of goes to show how, how our ancestors interacted with fire. So can this be applied across a greater landscape it has to be uh, to some degree because otherwise bootleg fire, Dixie fire, name fire, they're just, we're losing it fast. Um, you know, so hopefully people can take lessons from what we've been able to accomplish here. And we're seeing, we're seeing some of those positive effects in other places too. So maybe it's not necessarily specifically what we're doing here, but something very similar would be beneficial in other places and, and be massively beneficial to our country, our tribal people, our resources that we need to utilize. But for now, Oregon's fire seasons continue to grow into fire years. Our firefighters work endlessly to combat the incessant flames of extreme wildfires. Our landscapes are scorched and blackened and the people who live on them our morning. It's, it's had an, an emotional impact on me. I've gone through like a, a process of grieving, you know, it's been that close to me and I know other members 